Parev. My name is Michael Manassian, and I'm an Armenian-American writer. I've um, been publishing my work um, for many years, and uh, I've had a few chapbooks published. And my most recent collection of poetry was just published by Transcendent Zero Press, there's a copy right there, uh, called Time Is Not a River. It's available on Amazon. You can also find some of my poems on the Armenian Poetry Project and in various um, online and print magazines, if you just Google my name. The first poem I'm going to read today is called The Taste of Lavash. My grandfather builds the fire first, piling twigs and cut logs, using last week's Armenian newspaper as kindling. The characters of the printed page merging and melting into another alphabet of heat and flame. Next, a square sheet of tin is placed over the grate of the backyard fireplace as my aunts carry out bowls of water to a table sitting under the trees, a house built of sand and wind. My grandmother wipes her forehead, leaving behind her trace of white flour like the names of the dead she has whispered in my ear as she kneads and rolls out pieces of dough, then transfers each one to a wooden paddle I help carry to the fire. Later, we smear butter on each section of round, flat bread, rolling up each one before eating, the salt from our sweat mingled with the flavor of hot buttered lavash, like a communion for those left behind. A thin, crisp palimpsest of names and lives held in ash, melting and merging into images so old they precede language, just the pure flash of memory, taste, and bread. Uh, the next poem I'm going to read is called I Know You Are Not a Scientist. Dear friend, the letter begins. I'm sorry to tell you that the earth is indeed round, no matter how many two-dimensional drawings that you produce. And yes, it's true that I had a lonely childhood and suffered mightily, having not even an imaginary friend, though I found at an early age that I could communicate not only with animals and birds, but also with fish and mammals of the sea. There I am in the photograph on page one of today's New York Times, holding up a globe, though slightly misshapen, riding on the back of the blue whale, whale as it leaps from the ocean to sing the song made, as you know, without vocal cords. Hence, this letter. If you cannot sing, simply hum the tune as it wanders through your mind, like the sun revolving around the earth and the planet spinning like plates in the circus of air. The last poem I'm gonna read is called Postcard from Russia, which is uh, actually, there's a series of postcard poems um, in the book. Postcard from Russia. Above us, the clouds stack up like suitcases and steamer trunks piled up in the murderer's apartment, waiting for the delayed journey to the cemetery or perhaps a long ride on the train east. Time enough to, crack, to write a short novel or to crack the case before the unnamed protagonist, speaking faster than a lighted match, swallows whole sentences Paragraphs disappearing like smoke, words spilling onto the front of his shirt, then dropping like ash onto the floor. Along the tree-lined avenue, the widows stand still, mute statues among the upturned branches, burdened by the guilt of lost sons and husbands, then march like blackbirds, brushing their wings against the trees as rain falls and the sky bends, revealing teeth and the space between words. Thank you.